to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Well, hello there, everyone. Matt here with virtualinstructor.com, and welcome to the greatest live show in all of YouTube. Of course, I'm talking about Getting Sketchy Live, where either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher, Ashley Hurst, tries to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes with a little bit of art instruction sprinkled in there and some lively discussion as well. And tonight, Ashley's gonna be doing the drawings. He's getting all prepared over there. I think he's ready to go. Let's check in on Ashley. How are you doing over there? I think I'm ready to go. I got all my materials out. I hope you guys do too. We're drawing with pastel pencils today. Uh, I think I've mentioned before one of my favorite quotes by Picasso. Art washes from the soul the dust of everyday life. And if you've got a little dust to wash away today, I certainly do. So let's make some art and get ourselves cleaned up. And we're going to wash that dust away. Just wash that dust. Just what? wash I, it away. I'm thinking of that uh, commercial, that shampoo. Wash that man right out of my hair. Oh, that, yeah, that's that, right. Well, I'm going to wash that. that a commercial? I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair, too. I, I don't even have any hair to was wash that a man Was that a commercial? Yeah, it was. Wash that does man. Does that not seem totally right out of my hair? <laughs> Right? I guess it does. In, I guess in it does. today's by, age. By 2022 standards, or 2021 yeah, standards, that's a little that, bit. Was that early uh, 80s, late 70s? Yeah, probably like so. So I bet, We were you clearly know, too young to watch I'll those I'll bet commercials from the commercials. 80s are much more entertaining to watch today than they were back then. So <laughs> That's for sure. But none of them are high definition, so when you look at them, they just look like... <laughs> just you know, blobs just up there. Just a bunch of blurry blobs <laughs> with, uh, with bangs. Well, Ashley's going to be working with pastels tonight. He's also going to be working on black paper. If you're joining us live here on YouTube, there's a chat box. Of course, you can uh, make comments, ask questions. If you do have a comment or question that's directed specifically at one of us, if you put it in all capital letters, that will help me see it a little bit easier amongst all the comments and questions. Hello to everyone from all over the world. I'll call you out or I'll try to do my best to call you all out. Look, somebody is from Pofftown, North Carolina. Awesome. Hmm, interesting. I know some people there. <laughs> um, I'll do my best to call folks out uh, as I see it in the chat box. And also, we'll address your questions. But if you put it in all capital letters, that'll help me see it a little bit easier. I think I just said that. Um, what we're doing here on Getting Sketchy is we're creating a sketch. 45 minutes really isn't a whole lot of time to create a finished piece of artwork. But we do finished pieces of artwork as part of our membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com. In fact, when this broadcast is over, we're going to be heading over there and I'm going to be continuing on with the portrait of my youngest daughter. We're working with Charcoal for that live lesson series. Live lesson series are an hour long each week and they go all the way back to 2012 when I first started streaming. But there's also drawing and painting courses, which include videos and eBooks that are part of our membership program on a variety of subjects watercolor, pen and ink, pastels, realistic pencil drawing, uh, the list goes on and on. Those are all included as part of our membership program. And also weekly critiques, which are part of the Members Minute, uh, is also part of our membership program and also a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. Uh, so if you're not a member yet, you can check out the program. There's a link in the description below. Uh, you can check it out uh, for free for a week. We offer a week-long trial. Um, and then there's a 30-day money-back guarantee after that. So, uh, again, there's a link below this video if you want to go check it out, or a link in the description below this video. Or if you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free and also get on our newsletter list where we'll send you emails uh, with free videos and good stuff, uh, there's also a link to check that out below in the description as well. Is that all I normally say? I think so. I think that's the entire spiel we remembered this Thank week. You know. Yes. <laughs> All right, Ashley is taping something over there, so that means he must be ready to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and switch over and get into this one. All right, so we're doing another landscape today. And last week, I drew, or two weeks ago, I drew a tree with a bench in it, and I was trying to think of a theme, something to tie up my um, my drawings together this season. And there was sort of a sort of a weakly described pathway, sort of in the front or in the foreground, leading up to the bench. And I, I latched onto that and decided that my theme this this uh, season may be 
pathways. So I've, I've selected a pathway that's a little more obvious, more overt than the one leading to the park bench in my drawing from a couple of weeks ago. This is an odd composition for me. Um, Matt pointed out uh, that last season, all of my artwork had a focal point in one of the four thirds. And so I'm trying to break out of that a little bit. Um, not because it's a bad thing, but just to, just to stretch myself compositionally some. So this one's a little bit different. There is sort of um, an, an, a convergence right in this area with the darker shapes and the lighter shapes. And that's how I'm thinking of this. So we've got sort of a light, tri a light area in the, in the top left and in the bottom right, and then a dark area in the bottom left and in the top right. And it balances that way. This um, photograph reminds me of an artwork by, I believe it's J.W.M. Turner or maybe J.M.W. Turner. I get his middle, middle names initials mixed up sometimes, but he was an English painter who painted stormy seas and things like that. And he used this type of a composition where he had a light, dark, light darks, almost like a pinwheel relationship between the values. And so that's kind of what attracted me to this. And then additionally, it has a lot of texture. And you may or may not remember, I've mentioned a few times, texture is my least favorite element of art. So again, I'm trying to challenge myself <laughs> and, uh, and work uh, with, uh, with elements of art that I often avoid. Um, last season, I worked with very smooth objects that had no texture because I just love value and creating form through values. So this one's really different. There's not a strong light source. There's not a, a, a strong like um, uh, image of uh, formal imagery. It's just a lot of texture and lightness and darkness. Now, the black paper is really going to help us because there's a ton of black in at least half of this picture. And then there's a lot of um, the black in the pathway is really sort of a detail. You know, it's the separation between the stones. So this is the type of uh, image that would take, I feel like, a long time to do on white paper. But I think we can get it done in 45 minutes on black. All right. Well, as you get started, we'll say hello to Jennifer from North Wells. UK. All right. Go ahead and bring that uh, timer up, and I'm going to start up here. In the, oh, incidentally, um, I am using um, Conte à Paris pastel pencils, and they have numbers on them, not names of the colors. So I'm just going to be describing um, the colors. Like, for example, I would call this one a cool green versus maybe a warm, dull, earthy green. So we're just going to describe colors that way. And you can pick the color that seems to most match my description from whatever set you're using. Just wanted to mention that. And that's a, in, in my opinion, that's a better way to call. Look at your ring. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't taken off my dollar ring. Oh. My bad. Cash money. I know. I made that yesterday with my son. We both made <laughs> dollar rings and, and wore them today. And uh, I think he was the coolest kid in the fifth grade. So nice. it just feels so natural. I, did, I forgot it was on. So if you don't mind, I'll just leave my dollar yeah, ring on. Yeah, your dollar ring. It's great. Make one, make <laughs> 10. Make one for every finger. All right, I'm going to start the timer, and we'll say hello All right, here we go. to Maria from sunny Australia. Counterfusion is from Apex, North Carolina. Uh, East Sussex, UK. Uh, Lisbon, Portugal. Another UK. Um, you didn't mention the paper. Is this Mitant's pastel no, it paper? Is, it is black charcoal paper. Yeah, it looks like our... You'll recognize Blade the tooth pattern. in there. That's right. You'll recognize <laughs> that tooth. It's been all over the virtual instructor and getting sketchy lately. All right. Hello from Egypt. Uh, let's see. Uh, Calgary, Alberta, Idaho, Peachtree City, Georgia, Mexico, another Georgia, Quebec, Canada, Germany. Florida, Minneapolis, West Virginia, Southern Arizona. So that's very specific. Southern Arizona. Okay, so we've got this um, really nice atmospheric quality, all this mist in the air or fog or steam, whatever it is. And I thought I'd just kind of start back there and work my way down. Yeah, I really think that working on black paper um, works great when you have imagery that has bright colors, but also really strong shadows. And that's kind of why I picked this one. The finished product will probably be a little more, more colorful um, than what we actually see in the reference, but we do have a nice, strong, light, dark contrast provided by the composition and then also the paper. Now, I do have some stumps. 
So I'm going to start working with those now just to start to smooth out this first application, and then I'll be adding some more pastel over it eventually. I plan to use the stumps um, throughout, not always to totally smooth, but just sometimes to soften some of the marks. We'll be using the stump just a little bit, maybe in the stones a little bit later. Of course, you can use a paper towel for this. I like to take um, paper towels and fold them sort of like a, a football, you know, the triangle that we play paper football with, <clears throat> not like a real football. And it gives me actually three points to work with. Okay. Now, <clears throat> even across some of the... Um, some of the plant life in here, there is still some mist. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my semi-dirty stump, maybe wipe it off a little bit, and get a little bit of value even where some of the plant life is going to be. So you're basically just looking at shapes of value right, right now. Right now, that's right. Ignoring the texture for now, but I can't ignore it for long. And maybe a little bit extra over here. All right, Bagel says, I'm late. What mediums are we? <clears throat> I think they meant using... Um, this mm -hmm. is uh, pastel pencils, and we're working on black charcoal paper here. And uh, we've got folks from North New Jersey, North New Jersey, um, Argentina, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, Trinidad, and Tobago. Um, let's see. Port you know, Matt, Alberni. The sharpener may not may be too small. I yeah, that's what I was use, afraid of. I Corpus might need to Christi, use something Texas. else. I'm going to see if I can find a larger one. We may have to go old school and use an X-Acto knife. All right, now one thing I want to do with the pathway is uh, maybe even accentuate the little bit of a curve that we see in its left edge. So let's see, I'll just put a few marks in here. Let's say the pathway, um, the pathway's edge is just slightly to the left of center, and if mine's a little further left than it is in the reference, I'm okay with that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start. I mean, I'm still just working with the white right now. I'm going to go ahead and start finding some of these stones down here in our pathway, and <clears throat> some of them I want to be pretty specific about, the ones that are in the foreground, but um, as we move farther up the picture plane, the stones really run together, and we don't see so much of a separation between them. And then also... You know, this is a time drawing, so if, uh, if our stones in some places are a little large, we may just make the one next to it a little bit smaller. So they still fit together with about the same uh, level of density. Okay, looks like that first stone may have been just a little bit below our camera. So we'll back out a little bit in a few, in a few minutes. We'll back out so you can see that. There we go. Uh, eventually, we want to, or I would like to at least, um, add a little bit of interest to these stones with some color. So they're not very colorful, um, but maybe with just a little bit of, of yellow and blue mixed into the white, we'll be able to create a little bit of a temperature variance and uh, increase interest in our stones. Okay, just keep working our way up. The tooth of the paper is really apparent, and actually it does a pretty okay job of approximating the um, roughness of the surface of these stones, but we'll still use the stump over them or a paper towel um, sparingly in places. So I feel like this is the type of drawing that we really have to work pretty quickly to get a lot of pastel onto the page, um, and then we can kind of start to go back and revisit areas and refine them. So we're going to move as fast as we can up the pathway with our shapes, just thinking about the stones as shapes right now and uh, not so much the forms that they really are.
All right. It looks very vertical right now. There's nothing that's going to make this uh, pathway really lay down in space until we get um, more on our page. So if, if yours feels like you're drawing a wall right now instead of a pathway, don't worry about that. And if you're wondering why I've been mysteriously quiet, <laughs> it's because we are working with these Conte Apri pastel pencils, and they are so soft and brittle, and they're also very large, so they're much larger than the size of a regular pencil. So you have to have a wide barrel pencil sharpener to sharpen them, and if they get too dull and the wide barrel pencil sharpener won't work, you have to actually carve away, and the... Uh, the pastel material inside is so soft and brittle that one misstep with the blade causes the, the pastel material to break. And that's my biggest complaint with Conte Opry pastel pencils. I do feel like they are the best pastel pencils. They just, they just don't last very long because of how brittle they are. So I've been working on sharpening this one for Ashley here. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm still working on it because it is broken several times, but I think I'm at the finish line now here. Okay, I'm going to jump up here to what sort of is like our focal point. Just start working some marks in here to approximate super tiny stones. It's the scale relationship or the change in size of our stones that's really going to start to make them feel like um, they're moving away from us in space. There we go. Just putting some small marks up here is already starting to feel uh, like it's uh, wanting, It's encouraging us to see the space. All right, let me catch up with some of these questions and comments. Russ says, do you favor Conte pastel pencils over the other brands? Are they harder or softer? Well, maybe that answered your question <laughs> here. Uh, they're definitely softer, and they are definitely one of the best brands out there because they cover over the top of other pastel applications like you would expect pastels to do. Well, while some pastel pencil brands out there are a little bit harder and hard to cover over other areas, my second favorite uh, pastel pencils are probably this. Uh, let me make sure I get the name right. I think they're by Stabilo or something. Um, I'm not sure. So the, this is the area where the rocks really come together the most. And you might be able to tell that there's a, some warmth or yellow in the path in this area. So this is where we'll add a little bit of yellow into our white um, later in the drawing. And I had no idea I was going to be running around the studio this night looking for, tonight looking for stuff. <laughs> for <my laughs> love. But here they are. They're Carbothello pencils. And they are by, they are by a company called Stabilo. Um, or Stabilo, I think it's Stabilo. Uh, anyway, the, the Carbothello pastel pencils are a lot harder, but... Because they're harder, you can get more precise with your details, and you can kind of get away with using regular stick soft pastels um, and then use a harder pastel pencil for your details. But sometimes you need a softer pastel pencil, and that's where those uh, Conte Opry pastel pencils come in. Actual Noob is asking, was wondering if you guys have humans portraits lessons in the website. Yes, Actual Noob, we do. There's actually a whole course called Portrait Drawing the Smart Way, and in that course, we only draw humans. Of course, you're drawing a human right now. I'm drawing a human right now for our live lesson <laughs> That's series, right. yes. Um, let's see here. I'm looking for the questions and comments right. that are all capital letters. And I'm skipping over all the ones that are in lowercase. If you do want me to address your question or comment, if you put it in all capital letters, that will help me see it a little bit easier. Dorothy says, will this smudge easy if your hand touches the page? Yes. Yeah, and you might can put a piece of paper underneath it if you're afraid that your palm of your hand's going to smear. Uh, you can also use a sheet of Mylar paper so you can see through it. It's kind of a new discovery that I've found after years of using paper towels. Um, all right, uh, Simon says, this might be the most dumbest question I'll ever ask. <laughs> Which is better at drawing, video game controller or a mouse? I would say the mouse, I would because guess a mouse, the mouse, you can put ink on its little hands, and then it can run around <laughs> and on its tail. A video game and controller, just make if you marks. put paint on a video game controller, it's just going to sit there. Huh. Um, that's my answer. 
All right, I'm going to start to get into the black areas. We're going to leave this alone for a little bit and then come back to it. So um, in the darker areas, there are it's a lot of different type of, uh, I'll see them as marks. I know they're leaves, but I'm going to think of them as marks. I'm looking at them as marks. So it's a lot of different type of marks. And the lighter ones we're going to put on over some of the darker ones. So I've actually got a brown pencil right now, and I'm just going to start doing some scribbling, some really tight uh, little scribbling strokes where I see the density of some of these um, plants where I see that they're more dense. So I'll start with a little bit of brown and switch to some green. Now, these marks aren't really showing up that well in this grayer area, but they will a little bit more um, down here in the black. Let me skip down there for a little bit. There we go. Now, when you're working on that, I just want to point something out about creating the illusion of space in a drawing or mm -hmm. painting. Um, this is a really great image to talk about atmospheric perspective. Atmospheric atmospheric perspective is when you create the illusion of space in an image by making objects that are further away lighter in value and sometimes cooler in color temperature too. And in this case, we're dealing with that foggy mist back there. Right. But that's what ha actually happens naturally in our atmosphere too. As you go farther away from uh, the subject that you're looking at, obviously the values are going to get lighter and you can see that happening here just in kind of more of a condensed fashion. So if you make your objects that are further away lighter in value and sometimes cooler in color temperature, then that will help you create the illusion of space in your drawings and paintings. Yeah, I love atmospheric perspective. And Daly says, why pastel pencils over regular pastels? Well, in this, I mean, in this case, I think the size helps me help de determine my choice. This paper is, I believe, about six by eight inches, a three to four ratio. That's pretty small for stick pastels. So I went with the pastel pencils just because of the size. But I do like using square stick pastels. And if we were making this drawing maybe 18 inches by 24, or like a 16 by 20, uh, somewhere around that size, I would definitely probably want to switch to using some uh, some. Square sticks um, or round sticks if they're Rembrandts. And Becky Quick says, seems like the Conte is not leaving a lot of dust and then says, love this, Ashley. Oh, great. Um, yeah, the, so, well, that's it, another, I guess the pencils are going to be a little less dusty. The pencils than a are going to be too. a little bit less dusty. But one thing that you'll notice also about higher quality pastels is there's less residual dust. Uh, there's going to be some variance in, in the quality of. The materials mm -hmm. that you use, obviously, and some of the cheaper soft pastels I've noticed just throw dust everywhere. Um, and some of the higher quality pastels, although still dusty, they don't produce a whole lot of extra dust. Another thing to, to consider here is the texture of the paper. This paper has a laid pattern, and that is not a super, super heavy tooth, but it is a True. coarse texture. And because the texture of the paper is more coarse, more of the material stays where it should be. Uh, so it's it's often a good idea to work on a, a textured surface when you're working with pastels, even pastel pencils. That that lessens the dust, obviously. Um, and Buddy asked, Ashley, did I get it right? You are using Conte Opera? That's right. Tried to really focus on making the end of that statement sound like a question. Mm-hmm. GP adds thin sandpaper is ideal for sharpening pastel pencil tips, like the sanguine charcoal. You know, and yes, that I did. Use, when I was sharpening Ashley's white pencil, I did use the sandpaper. Well, I thought I brought a sandpaper pad with me today. I thought it was in my little pencil pouch, and it uh, wasn't in there. So I must have taken it out and used it earlier in the day. All right, now over here, there's a lot of warmth. Some some red maybe, or sort of some um, orangish marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and start playing that up a little bit. Now remember, some of these areas will soften just subtly with a stump. Dorothy says, so cool. Reminds me of the path in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Ooh, yeah. Floating in the air. Oh, I, I, yeah, wait a minute. Is that... Raiders of the Lost Ark. Well, there's or, one part where you, I'm thinking of I the, think third, that's the, last the third movie, The Last Crusade. Yeah, The Last Crusade. Right, that's where he is. threw the threw the pebbles over the illusory. He had pathway. to take a leap of faith. Yeah, that's right, leap of faith. Um, but Raiders of the Lost Ark is fantastic. 
Eli says, how do you preserve the drawing from falling out slash smearing once it's done? Well, I use a little bit of fixative, or you can just be really, really careful with it. And that's what Matt does with his. Yeah, I'm a really careful person. He's a really careful. I'm not really a his. careful person in most things, but when I'm dealing with, with my uh, chalky pastel drawings and charcoal drawings, I am. I mentioned last week, I, I, or maybe two weeks ago, I, I think it was last week, I mentioned I got that uh, paper stack. That's right. What is it called? It's right behind you. The yeah. Tabaret. Tabaret. The new Tabaret. But uh, my wife was calling it something else, like something with a stack. Anyway, I liked hers better because I didn't have to say Tabaret. <laughs> tabaret. Um, anyway, I've started slowly bringing some artworks over there, and I lay them all out flat. And then you can get some large sheets of uh, wax paper or um, tracing paper and lay over the top of each layer of artwork that you put down. Now, this, yeah, this thing, thing is about do. 22 by 28, or it stores 22 by 28 paper or artworks up to that size. So I can put several artworks on a layer and then put that cover sheet that covers all of them, and then I've got another layer to put artwork on. And then I just repeat that process. And that keeps the artwork from smearing because it's not moving around. I'm not taking the artwork out and looking at it and putting it down. I keep it in there until it fills up, and I buy another tabaret, or <laughs> um, I, I take it out and frame it. I, I have another tabaret that's a little bit smaller, but it is super filled. It, some of the drawers I have trouble closing because there's so much artwork in it. So the new one is, is uh, freeing up some space, obviously. Karen asked, what paper are you using? This is black charcoal paper, so it has a laid pattern. A laid pattern means that um, you've got lines that are flowing horizontally or vertically, depending on how you orient your paper. So you can kind of see those lines in the top uh, yeah, left. Yeah, they show up maybe up here a little bit more. Yeah. Where the application is a little more, more complete and smoother. Now, if Ashley would have turned his paper horizontally, those mm. lines would have been vertically right. oriented. Um, but it's just a, a very predictable pattern. Uh, that, that's all. It's a great texture to work on with a powdery or chalky material like uh, the, the, the pastel pencils Ashley's using. But I actually used this, this paper for house portraits. I used to do house portraits on commission, and I always liked working on charcoal paper, not black charcoal paper, but uh, the regular charcoal paper, just kind of an off-white color uh, because it was really great for making the illusion of trees and bushes and also bricks. It's mm. really easy to create oh, yeah. texture with graphite on this particular type of paper. So, All right, we're just still roughing up the areas. All these larger marks are going to go down on top and hopefully pull some of this together. So we're just making, still making rougher areas. So let's see, I do have, um, I used briefly for just a moment, this uh, Derwent pastel, it's the oddball in the group. It's the orange earth color. Those are also really good. I have yeah, these are too. great, but this is just the oddball. It's a color I wanted, and I didn't really have it, um, have another alternative. Um, Orion Nebula says, I was thinking the Hobbit for this one and Harry Potter for the tree two weeks ago. <laughs> in particular, the Whomping Willow. Um put a few cooler marks in here too and um some of these marks need to be darker so i'm going to just fill in some of these areas that are still black with the cooler green and then i'm going to use a kneaded eraser over it to darken them so it might look a little bit homogenous for just just a little bit i'll try to get some variety back in there with a kneaded eraser i do want to go ahead margaret says this medium is awesome then again so were the markers, so many mediums, so little time. That's, <laughs> That's really true. Right. That's yeah. right. It's really true. There's so many. If, if you uh, open yourself up to exploring lots of different mediums, then you realize the joy of creating with each type of medium. And uh, it's, sometimes it's hard to decide what you're going to use. Sometimes I start a drawing or painting with one medium, and I get into it a little bit, and then I decide, ah, I think I want to do this with a different medium. I started a painting last week with oils, and I decided that I'm going to do the painting with gouache instead. <laughs> After you started. After I started. I, I put in a couple of hours and then decided, and like uh, the right, I think I'm going right to go with choice. gouache for this one. 
All right, I think I want to go ahead and start putting some stronger marks here in places. So I'm going to just kind of begin here and maybe work my way across and down. And Gregory is asking, how is Tabaret spelled? You, T you're asking the wrong people B here. Well, maybe not. You're, I'm, I can't spell Tabaret. O R. I like your spelling there. E T. T A B O R E T. I'm probably wrong about that. That's how he spelled it. Okay. Um, and if that, you know, you can always just put that in, in a search engine, and I'm sure you'll be corrected. I do that several times yeah, a day. Yeah, I, I need to too, be, yeah. my spelling needs correcting several times a day. Okay, Amanda asks, when do you use pastel pencils versus pastels in a regular format non-pencil image, I guess? It's, uh, in a regular format non-pencil. I'm not sure about the end of that, but I, I guess what she's asking is, when do you decide to use pastel pencils over pastels? You mean instead of pastels? Like pastel pencils instead of pastels? I think that's what it sounds like, okay. but... Not like on top of them. But the mediums are essentially the same. Yeah. Uh, just one is in a pencil form and one is in a stick form. So it's kind of like comparing charcoal pencils and charcoal. So I guess what I would say is my first answer was just the size, you know, kind of determined um, the that I would prefer pastel pencils over the square sticks or round sticks. Um, and then also... If, I, if it's a, a drawing that I feel like I want to lay the sticks down, you know, and use the side of the stick, of course, can't do that with a pencil because the side of the pastel is all covered up with wood. So uh, I guess it depends on the, I let the image help me decide. So I don't know if that's a great answer, but some images may have larger, smooth areas where you want to um, get a quick application by laying your pastels down. Uh... Big She asks, I have only used oil pastels. Any tips for starting out with soft pastels? What should I practice? Well, oil pastels, you have to really think about your applications. You have to really think about the layers you put down because each time you put down another color, it mixes with the colors underneath. Um, with some of the softer oil pastels, you can cover underneath, you can cover over the top of layers underneath, but you really need to make sure you're using an oil pastel that's really heavy. And then even then some some mixing is going to occur. Oil pastels in thought process are actually a little bit more similar to working with colored pencils. Um, and with soft pastels, they're going to function very similar, similarly. Similarly. <laughs> in a, sim yeah, um, as an opaque painting medium. In other words, you can put down a color <clears throat> and if you want to go right over the top of it with another application of soft pastel and cover it completely, you can or if you want to blend those two colors together and mix them, you can do that too. So in my opinion, soft pastels are definitely dustier and a little bit more messy compared to oil pastels. But I really feel like soft pastels are actually an easier medium to work with than oil pastels. Because with oil pastels, you have to think about your layering. With soft pastels, you, you have a little bit more freedom to experiment. Um, and you can easily cover up what you've put down. So... I would practice painting uh, whatever you're interested in uh, with soft pastels. It doesn't really matter what, what subject you're working with with soft pastels. Whatever you're interested in, um, I think, will, is a good subject to practice with. Do you have anything to add to that? I don't think so. That's a great answer. I'm actually releasing a course on oil pastels right now, Rakshi, so... Uh, you can check that out, of, that out, of course. Just finished the last artwork for that course. So, uh, let's All see. right, so I'm working with some of the slightly larger um, leaf-type shapes over here, and uh, I'm happy with it. I mean, I needed to get some variety over there, and it's starting to happen now. So uh, just working with what looks like some fern branches and just trying to make some little individual marks that add up to be a branch. Yeah, you're creating a wonderful illusion here too. And the black of the paper is really working hard for you. It, it, yeah, All those it shadowed areas, there's really not a whole lot of material on the surface at this point, <laughs> which leads me to the next comment here, which is kind of funny. Uh, Grad Lib says, I thought the colors were supposed to be cool or warm, not mixed to look nice. For beginners? <laughs> yeah, this is for beginners. Um, Ashley, well, beginners, intermediate, I, I guess we have all levels that, that come sure. to us. So there's advanced artists. There are professional artists that use our program. But um, Well, th th this is about mark making, not about drawing accuracy. And so in my mind, that's how it can help 
um, beginners because we can focus on our marks and not have to get upset or, or, or keep changing our proportions until we finally get to making the texture. So we get to the texture early in this drawing. Usually you have to kind of save that um, for much later after you've established a form and a range of values. So we get to skip that kind of stuff and get right to the mark making here. Well, um, the colors are mixing together the cool and, and warm greens, I guess is what you're referring to uh, mm -hmm. there, Grad, because of their positioning on the paper and how much work the black of the paper is, is doing right now. All that black of the paper is creating these wonderful shadows, and Ashley's adding these dominant light value marks that are very clear in the photo reference. And um, he's just picking colors that and values that are similar that are to what close, he's observing. Right. There's a there's a plant here that's probably beige, and I've used an orange mark for it because beige orange is closer to beige um, than green. Now I do plan to go over. I have already started. I did put a brown mark here, and then went in with a white and put a little white mark on top of it that kind of faded out as we went down. So you know I, I hope to go back to some of these areas and put um, a little bit of another color into some of these, but it, you know, as long as we get our colors kind of close um, in the same side of the, uh, same, maybe the same quarter or third of the color wheel as to the colors we see, it should look pretty good. Sometimes it can it kind of look like magic is happening there, but uh, it really is just an illusion that's being created. Now you might notice I skip around a lot. Um, I feel like I can see the picture and develop better. If one area starts to feel like it's more done than another, I leave it alone for a while. And so hopefully once everything's got something on it and it does, I just keep skipping around and trying to develop the drawing evenly. So whenever our 45 minutes is up, you know, hopefully um, it looks like it could be called finished, even if uh, we could revisit each area um, again. Sarah says, love how quickly the depth of the image is developing. Thanks for that comment, Buddy. Um, and Buddy says, Ashley, I'd like to walk the path and see where it leads me. I would too. You know, I, I, I thought about doing a pictures of a person missing, you know, that we saw the bench and there was no person on it. And this one leads me around a bend. I feel like there should be a person back there too. So <laughs> I think there's a mysterious person there's back there. There's a shadowy there. figure. Yeah, yeah, there's a shadowy figure. All right. Peter says it's looking great. It hasn't been half an hour. We're going to have to get up into this area pretty soon. You know, this looks like a little mountain range, and we need to really break all that up. So I'm kind of saving that. So if this is bothering you like it's bothering me, we're going we're gonna to get there. But I want to go back to the path now for a little while. I've been working in the textured areas for some time. So I'm going to go in here and uh, not destroy all of the tooth, but um, just kind of touch my stones a little bit so they're softened to some degree. And then we'll get some uh, blue and some yellow into these stones and just try to add a little bit of interest. And when you're doing that, some of those whites are being knocked down and turning into grays. That's true. Because of the black underneath. So. That's true. Give us a chance get to a little, look for some real highlights in there later. Yeah, some more variety in the value there. Keep checking your reference. Especially with a stump. It's easy to get stump happy. I have a love-hate relationship with stumps. Because I love the marks. You know, I love mark making. I like to see my marks and other people's marks. But the stump makes marks too. It doesn't just destroy them. Okay, and then of course, in these black areas, and I've actually lost a little bit of the black area where my hand has been, but even in the blacker areas or what would be the side of some of our stones, they're not entirely black. So I'm going to get in there again with a stump and just, just kind of touch the edge in places of where the tops of the stones meet the sides of the stones. So it's not quite so stark. Create a little softer edge in places. A little bit more variety. That's what we're talking about here. All right. So I think I'll take my, I think I'll just use my orange pencil a little bit and get a little bit of orange up in here, kind of in the middle of our path. And I'll go over it with some white. 
just warming it up a little bit in that area. It's pretty subtle. Yeah, I was wondering if you were going to warm those up there. Yeah, that's what was something I like about the path. It has a little variety mm -hmm. in temperature. And it's, it's kind of odd. I'm going to use some cooler colors up here in the foreground instead of in the background. Sometimes we, and I think you might have mentioned it, sometimes we think about, especially with air atmospheric perspective, things becoming cooler or appearing to be cooler as we get farther away. But this isn't crazy far away. You know, we're not talking about the, the Blue Ridge Mountains fading off into the distance. So I think we may still see some warm colors just that far away, even with an image that's so atmospheric. All right, so I've got this um, 1355 pencil. It's kind of a pale, pale baby blue. And I'll start putting some of it into our stones as well. Okay, Grad Lib clarifies a little bit. Earlier they had asked um, about the warm and cool okay. coming together. Yeah. And I think they thought that it needed to be all cool or all warm. And now they're realizing that you're, you're matching the colors that you see in the reference. Okay. And um, they thought that if you did it all warm or cool, it would be a harmonious versus all mixed. Oh, okay. And, and I see that. I, I see what you're saying. Um, I like to always try to find a color scheme that I can pull out. And in this particular image, I feel like the color scheme that seems, well, there's two options here, two directions you could go. And personally, if you wanted to pull out a color scheme, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you could go all cool or you could go all warm. That's, that's definitely a possibility. But you've got a lot of greens and you've got a lot of oranges in there too. So if you could look for some opportunities to pull out some purples, yeah, like in do the stones, there. Yeah, the or in the background, or in the background, we could lean it toward a, a white, a white violet. Then you could have uh, you could pull out a secondary color scheme. Oh, don't tempt me! We're so late in the drawing because uh, I love minutes. I love secondary colors. Yeah, schemes. me too. Um, another option, of course, you could you could kind of push the greens and the. You could push the oranges where they were a little bit more red, and then mm -hmm. you could go with a, a, a complementary color scheme where you could pull out some of those reds. There's some pink undertones in some of those stones, it looks like. There's some reds in those grassy areas. So you could definitely do kind of red and green and not go all out with red and green, but just kind of have an, an undertone of red and green, and that would help to harmonize the image. But right now, the colors are pretty simple. There's mostly oranges and greens, and most of the rest of the colors are neutral, so there is opportunities for the purple. So if I was gonna, for me, if I was gonna pull out a, a color scheme and make it feel a little bit more har harmonious and unified, I would definitely go that secondary route. But already, as I mentioned before, the colors are limited, so it That's already right. feels harmonious to me. Well, I mean, even if it's not a clear color scheme, but it's nature, then it's still going to feel like it uh, all belongs together. If, it, if, it, if it's accurate, yeah. even if it's not a scheme specifically. Yeah, you don't have to use a color scheme in your artwork. So it's just... But it is nice, especially to organize it. But I feel like this drawing is organized by its value. You know, the patches of darkness and the patches mm -hmm. of light. So that's kind, of, that's kind of what I'm leaning on right now. I'm going to lean on this uh, electric eraser a little bit. See if we can just start to break up this contour. There we go. We're just going to do that around the edge for a little while. Now, you know, this is going to take off a lot of pastel, so I'll go back and soften <laughs> these areas with my stump so that they still feel like they're and that being paper, affected by that atmosphere. That paper isn't super tough either. No, it's not. <laughs> you got to barely touch it. Um, we may see the drawing board in a minute. <laughs> but those little those little pieces of plants there yeah, are really great. cool. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. I love it. Because you can just use a really sharpened eraser. You know, you can take a pink eraser and, and cut it. I like to cut my pink erasers up into little pieces, so I've got lots of corners to use to erase with. Yeah, they were all wondering how long it was going to take you to pull out that electric pencil sharpener. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to cackle. <laughs> sorry about that. Get excited over this electric pencil sharpener. So a few, just a few little dark marks up here. We'll so I'll go back and soften those a little bit too. Still, it's still the same kind of mark we're making. We're just uh, subtracting instead of adding right now. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I don't use a paper towel a lot of times. I use my finger like this to post in a spot that I don't think I'll smear and then just kind of try to be careful. I do this in my oil paintings as well sometimes. I'll find a dry spot and post my pinky there and just kind of pivot around it while I paint. All right. Yeah, it's looking fantastic. Let's see. Now we'll just, really great. just tap these areas a little bit. I don't even really want to... I don't want to make a mark across them. I'm just going to tap them a little bit. Delicate business. Now, there's some other plants up there that are even fainter, and I want to put those in with a pastel, one that's going to show up. So let's see. The white's going to kill the value and the color, so I might be able to use a, a relatively strong green. And of course, you know, a lot of these um, reeds or, you know, leaves, they're really pointy. So I try to think about um, moving the pencil from the fatter part to the pointy part really quick like that. This one looks kind of like bamboo. So I have a swing in my yard that is in a tree. It's about 60 feet up. It took me forever to get the swing up into the tree that high. And now I want to take it down, and I'm not exactly sure how to do that. But I do have bamboo that grows behind my house, speaking of bamboo. Oh. So I think I'm going to try to make a 60-foot tall bamboo pole and put a little saw on the end of it and, and use it like a pole saw, a 60-foot-long mm -hmm. bamboo pole mm -hmm. saw. So we'll see how that works out. Is it tied at the top? Yeah, okay. it's tied up there. Yeah. So yeah. how did you tie it up there? Well, I made a, I made a loop on one end, so it's yeah. actually looped through a loop all the way up there. You know, once I got the rope around the branch, it's really, really high in the tree, and if so I don't find a way to get it down, I used a sandbag on the end of... Um, some twine, pretty light string, yeah. and then I just swung it around like a lasso and let go of it about a hundred times and finally got it over the branch, you yeah. know, 60 feet into the air. It was, it's been an afternoon doing that. So, but my kids are getting a little bit bigger and I don't, I think I'd like to just kind of take it down. You're they tired of going out there and swinging on it. Yeah. I, no one will push me. <laughs> no one will push me anymore because the kids are getting too big. So... Yeah, Margaret says, everyone, don't forget to like this. Yeah, please, please do. Please like this video. I never, t I never suggest that people like the video. I don't, I don't like feeling do. like I'm telling people what to do. Yeah, I know. You know? Um, people are if you always like, like it, smash that subscribe right, button. Right, well, yeah, right. I would like you to be a subscriber to this channel, but I don't want you to smash anything. <laughs> you can click on the, the subscription Just button, the subscribe gently. button. Uh, and gently. click on the like button while you're at it. That's a nice thing to do if you like this video. That helps... Helps okay. other people find the videos in, in the uh, in the YouTube, of course. So, um, Peter says, Matt, did you say this image was from Pixabay or not? Is yes, this? it was. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, it and is from it Pixabay. is edited. It was more. There was a little bit more image here, and I cropped it down some. All right. So this is what my left hand looks like when I start working with pastels. When I use one, I can't seem to put it back down. So maybe you have that problem yeah. too. I do that with colored pencils. And pastel pencils. It's just easy to find it that way. Yeah, it is. And I'm, I'm working on a tilted surface, so I'm afraid if I set them back down, they may roll off and I won't be able to reach them again. All right, there we go. Take a little bit more yeah, Simon off. points out the sub button will break if you smash it. <laughs> it's true. And maybe your computer. Your keyboard all right we do need to get a big blob of green grass right up here all 
maybe a few little light spots between those. You know, texture is created with light and darkness really close together. So if we lose that, we got to put it back. A little bit, of, a little bit more of my orange right along the edge, just to transition into our pit of foliage. Oh, we got three minutes. We just keep making marks for three more minutes. Yeah, you uh, you had plenty of time for this one. I think so. You were well prepared for this subject matter. I've been friend. thinking about it all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> been looking forward to this all day. All right, we've got two minutes. So two minutes. So we need to look at it and ask ourselves, what's the biggest difference? You know, what's the biggest difference? I'm going to need more texture. i got some empty spaces over here. Here's a good question. Okay. Uh, 3698S asks, are colored pencils a good underpainting for pastels? And the answer to that is no. Um, it's going to smooth out the tooth, you think? Yeah, it's colored pencils fill the are wax-based. And once they're filled on the surface, you're going to have some real trouble covering over the top of them with pastels. But what is a good underpainting material for pastels is something like watercolor, um, or there's a medium called pan pastels, which are basically the pastel material in these little little pans, kind of like makeup that you can apply underneath um, and apply pastels over the top. It's the same material, really. Um, but yeah, I would I wouldn't necessarily use colored pencils as an underpainting for pastels, but uh, definitely watercolor you can get away with that for sure. Now, now you use marker under. Colored pencil. Colored pencils. Would yeah. you ever use marker under pastels? I guess you could. I, I would think you could because it doesn't affect the tooth, really. Yeah, you probably could. So um, you've never done that. The problem with with that combination, and it's not a problem, but it's something to consider, mm -hmm. is that you want to you want to have a textured surface when you work with pastels, and the markers. You might soak up a lot of ma oh, marker material yeah. on a texture yeah, surface. Yeah, I guess so. Especially like watercolor paper. It would be an unusual like surface to try. With you the could markers. definitely do it, um, but I would probably use like the smoother side of Canson Mitant's pastel paper, maybe, yeah. um, or maybe even some Artigan paper that has a very weak tooth. But you can get away with using pastels on that to a limited oh. degree. Oh. Yep, there you go. Contra Try not operating. to use curse words. Try not to use And that's the pencil. I you can remember keep this how going. long it was when you first started. That's right. <laughs> and that's right. all of my sharpening efforts off camera have, you know, I would get the pencil exposed and then it would break. I think that core <laughs> might have been broken. Yeah, it may because have. Because it, it broke over and over again. I'm still using it. We're still hanging on. I straightened it back out and rolled it over in my hand, so... Okay, uh, buddy asked, Matt or Ashley, do you have any recommendation about a drawing pad to tap the paper on? Oh, maybe she means tape the paper on? Yeah. Or like a... Like a, like a drawing, like a drawing board? board, possibly. I'm using a drawing board right now. Yeah, so that's this, a drawing board. This is a pretty big, like, honeycomb drawing board. It's got some kind of honeycomb inside, so it's not very heavy, but it's yeah. really large. It's a real drawing board. I think I ordered that from Amazon... It's pretty large. I think it might be 22 by 28. That's not the drawing board I typically use. Um, that drawing board's nice. It's a nice soft surface to work on. What I use actually, because I have several artworks going at one time, a lot of times, is um, I use shelves from Ikea. Yeah, that's right. Those, they're just white shelves. Like a smooth um, plastic they're very veneer. smooth. They're the same kind of surface that you would expect to see on a on a table, and they're very cheap. And I can have artworks taped to them uh, at all times, and then I just move the boards around. So, as I look around right now, I've got one, two. Well, you can three, have several four. projects going at once. I got four boards with artwork on it now. Two of the boards are are taken up by one artwork. And then the other two are, are finished artworks that are just sitting on the board. So it's really only one artwork that's in progress right this second. Uh, but Matt hasn't noticed this. the time's up. Oh, I'm just going to keep yeah, drawing. I don't care about the time. <laughs> um, 
but anyway, I think those those boards work great, or, or they work as boards, and they're they're really just shelving. They're a little bit heavier, you know. They're than, definitely heavier than a, an actual, yeah. um, you know, advertised honeycomb um, style drawing board where it has the. Uh, it's really just sort of thin, two thin pieces of wood across some sort of a honeycomb uh, filler inside. And before I started using the shelves, I was using um, masonite board. Oh yeah. And well, that, you know, that's, that what, well that's what regular drawing boards are made of. The ones with yeah. the two clips mm -hmm. on the side or yep. the top, those are masonite. Or hardboard, some people call them, hard, in some places it's called hardboard. Ooh, Monica says, I've used gouache as an underpainting with soft pastels, and that's an excellent suggestion. Ooh, gouache is ones. sometimes referred to as opaque watercolor. Yeah. But it's the same kind, when it dries, it's the same kind of powdery, it's very similar to pastels. Definitely not as dusty. Uh, but yeah. It's got a chalky look to it a little bit. Mm hmm Now we don't want to call our pastels chalk. Didn't mean to do that. I apologize. Anybody that Well, I think like if you that. call them chalk pastels, everybody knows what you're talking they about. They do. They're not, you know, they're not chalk, but um, they feel like chalk. They they perform like chalk. Eli says drawing looks great. Excellent job, Ashley. Thank and Buddy you so says much. shelves. Yeah, they're shelves. <laughs> um, you know, there's a store called IKEA, if you haven't heard of it. And um, they have these very basic uh, bookshelves that they manufacture. And you can order the shelves. When you, when you buy the bookshelves, they come with shelves. But you can also order the shelves individually for extra shelves. And those shelves are very inexpensive, and they're about they're the perfect size to fit on my table uh, for what I do here. And it's very easy to move things around, so that's what I use. Um, and it's a nice, white, smooth surface. It's a very hard surface. It's perfect, actually. All right. I'd say we could probably stop at any time. You know, I feel yeah. like it's evenly worked, pretty much. So probably at the end, I would go back and try to get just a little bit more white up here that might have disappeared. It's not going to get as white as what we see in the reference because it, it does have a black, you know, black surface underneath it, but it's pretty darn light. All right. I have enjoyed uh, making this drawing. I hope you guys followed it along and made it with me, or you are following along and you'll finish yours soon. There we go. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Really, really nice job with the colors. Thank you. Um, what I really like about it is the rhythm that's happening there. You know, you've got From the, all those that marks repetition or the stones. of the stones yeah. and also the marks of the, the grasses that obviously dictate or communicate that we are... We are not where we live. <laughs> That's right. Um, but it's a, a beautiful drawing. Lots of art elements happening in that uh, scene that are really making it work. And there's no way we could have, I mean, it's still just a sketch, you know. We could continue to work further on it, but there's no way we could get this far in this amount of time on a piece of white paper. No way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no way. No way. So if you, have, if you haven't ever worked on black paper before, um, pick up a whole sketchbook of it and just uh, enjoy, you know, get some, some maybe some pastel pencils and a white colored pencil and uh, just try to work backwards, you know, work towards the light for a while. It'll make you a better painter through drawing. All right. Uh, Brent Does Art says, great job, Ashley. Thank you, Brent. Uh, Henrique says, thank you for this live stream. You're absolutely welcome. And Buddy says, yeah, I really like it. Awesome. Uh, Cindy says, looks great. Ink H says, really nice job. And they're sorry that they got here so late. <laughs> um, 3698S says, beautiful painting. Great drawing as usual. Gosh, time's up already, says Buddy. Hope to see I you know. in the live session. Yeah, yeah hope to see you there in a we'll minute there, there, Buddy. Soon. Uh, Hoot and Holler says, nice, well done. Laura Rainbow Dragon says, looks great. Definitely going to try this one. Excellent. Jennifer Vaughn says, brilliant. Thank you. Mary says, love it. Beautiful. And thank you, guys. I love all those warm comments. Thank you. As Ashley's increasing his contrast. <laughs> just going to keep going. Keep going until Matt shuts my camera off. No, I'm just kidding. I'm stopping. Well, if you I'm putting anything, it down. Do you have anything else to say about it before we switch over here? Um... I don't believe so. You might be able to, I, I tried to mess around with the path just a little bit. Um, it's, so it's a little tiny bit skinnier there maybe than it is down here. 
Um, I, I guess I, I said I was going to exaggerate this curve, mm-hmm. and it actually looks pretty accurate, so I guess it was okay. But uh, yeah. I'm pretty happy with it. I, I enjoyed making this drawing, and I'm, I'm feeling better about my uh, better about the element of art texture. I think we're starting to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how you can make a piece of art without texture. Well, saying? you know, just draw eggs all the time like I do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Smooth is a texture, too. Smooth counts as a texture. Tangerine Hay says, I've smashed the like and subscribe. Now off to smash some Ikea bookshelves. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) All right. All right. Uh, Let's uh, That's it That's it for this one. Yep. All right, everybody. Thanks for sticking around for the last, let's see, we've been at it for an hour. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed watching this image come into the light because it's coming into the light. You're adding the light. Come out of the fog. Uh, Yeah, come out of the fog. Come out of the mist. That's right. Drawing Drawings in the mist. Drawings in the mist. Artists in the mist. (laughs) And I know uh, Ashley enjoyed uh, creating it, too. Uh, can't wait to see what you do uh, two weeks from now. I can't wait to see what you're doing next week. Now, I actually know, oh, I know, what, what, I know what Matt's doing next week, but I don't want to tell you. But yeah. it's gonna, you're going to love it. It's going to be great. Um, I actually already have my subject picked out uh, next week because next week we're going to be close to Halloween. Ooh. So it's, it might be Halloween themed a little bit. We'll see. But I'm going to be sticking with food. That's what I'm doing for... Uh, that's your drawings. motif. That's your motif this uh, this season, yeah, right? Yeah, my motif is food. Something everybody can get behind. Something yeah. we can all support. And you can't eat without teeth. <laughs> so it's always good to have motif. You need motif if you're going to eat match drawings. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next week, uh, we'll, we'll handle that. We are going to be working with color again next week. Probably going to be using pastels, actually. So, okay. Uh, so I didn't mean to step on your pastels. toes or anything, but we'll just keep this pastel train going. So <laughs> well, keep them sharp. Well, at least for another week, anyway. Um, remember, we're going to be live over at thevirtualinstructor.com in just a few minutes from now. I'll be drawing a portrait. It's going to be much slower. We're going on the same texture paper, though. Uh, just Mm -hmm. with uh, black and white charcoal. We're almost finished with that portrait, actually. Uh, Doesn't seem like there's a lot, or doesn't seem like we're almost finished, but we actually are. Um, Anyway, uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you're not new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you want to check out three course videos and eBooks for free, there's a link in the description below. If you want to check out our fantastic membership program, um, there is so much content that's part of the membership program. Um, It can be overwhelming, but it is really, really a product of of love that I have worked on for, uh, I guess, over a decade now. Yeah, that's right. So uh, there's a lot of stuff there. So Mm -hmm. there's a link to that in the description below. I hope you guys have a wonderful, safe week. Um, If we're not going to see you again until next week. Uh, With that, we're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Good night, everybody.